Across the world, many people know the challenges that come with health problems and a lack of affordable care. Families often face tough choices, perhaps buying less food in order to pay for medication, and some go into debt to cover medical costs. But those issues are even more complicated when faced with the unstable situation in Gaza, where access to basic medical services is an ongoing challenge. Today, we bring you one family's experience with the healthcare system. FSRN's Rami Amlagari files this reporter's notebook. My family's lengthy journey to seek medical treatment for my wife began in 2007, as in fighting broke out between Fatah and Hamas. We joined the ranks of hundreds of Palestinians in Gaza, heading for hospitals in Egypt. My wife, who is also the mother of our four children, had to wait a month before she could receive a treatment at the Nasser Institute in Cairo. But when the treatment was complete, Israel has implemented the blockade of the Gaza Strip, and Egypt had shut down Gaza's main gateway to the outside world, the Rafah crossing terminal. We were stranded. Because my wife and I are Palestinians and have lived through occupation and repression and siege, we remained steadfast, even as we were separated from our beloved children and the rest of our family for two consecutive months. Eventually, we came back to Gaza through a small commercial Egyptian-Israeli crossing in the Nakab, Negev Desert, called Al Auja. Four years later, we have returned to the same hospital, the Nasser Institute in Cairo. The facilities and the standard of care are much more advanced compared to those available in Gaza. My wife is receiving the care she needs and is trying to cope with both her health condition and the agony of being away from our children. Unlike other less lucky families still waiting in Gaza. We have finally accessed medical treatment, but the obstacles we have encountered are absurd. We had to wait in Egypt for a month to get the results of an MRI scan and the doctor's final word about her case. Why did we have to wait that long in another country's hospital when we could have received the results and the doctor's advice back home in Gaza, near our beloved children? And without disrupting our lives, the doctors sent us back to Gaza and told us to return in three months. Now we are back again, where my wife is receiving daily treatment for a tumor that is not less hated than our conditions in the occupied Gaza Strip. Why don't we have good medical staff in Gaza who are well trained and highly qualified? And can practice preventive medicine. Why do we have to travel long distances, more than 300 miles in our case, and have no choice but to stay in a different country? Isn't ridiculous that we are forced to be away from our loved ones, who could help comfort us if they were nearby? Isn't ridiculous? That due to the lack of advanced medical technology in Gaza, one has to go to another country for diagnosis, medical checkups, and a treatment. In Egypt, I am my wife's husband, but I am also her nurse and a stand-in for her parents, her brothers, and sisters, and her beloved children. When she feels ill or very tired as a result of her treatment. I feel a great deal of bitterness because of the lack of support around us, the lack of people who could help comfort my wife, people who could help give her the warmth and personal care she needs. Our four children, Muhammad five, Nadine eight, Asil thirteen, and Munir twelve, could help warm their mother and be warmed by her if she was hospitalized. In Gaza, not Cairo, isn't ridiculous that a short daily therapy session for a period of six weeks obliges us to stay away from our homeland, away from our children and relatives, and away from my work. Isn't ridiculous that a Palestinian authority spends 
tens of millions of dollars each year, sending patients abroad for treatment. Isn't ridiculous when those millions of dollars could have been invested in improving our own Palestinian health system? These are the questions that occupy my mind as I wait in the hallways of the Nasser Institute Hospital. For Afa Saran's reporter's notebook, I am Rami Al-Mughari in Cairo.